So everything was going great until it wasn't. So from the beginning, uh, when Jerry came to us, he wanted to build uh, not an Evo, he wanted to actually build an R32 Volkswagen. And long story short, it really didn't make sense. Uh, so that dream quickly went out the window uh, and we started looking at other platforms. Um, he had an Evo in the past, he's like, oh cool, let's do an Evo. So, okay, I'm fine with that. Let's start looking. So we started looking, scour the internet, scour Facebook. Let's look around a little bit. So finally found one, lightning yellow 03. Uh, very low miles, extremely clean. The guy came down, we inspected the car, definitely ticked all the boxes. Jared pulled the trigger, we got the car. When I say that this car was clean, I was right, the car is clean. It's not perfect though, it wasn't perfect, but it was repairable, it was refinishable, we could restore it. We ended up doing a lot of resto work on the car because the factory paint, the doors, the quarter panels, the hood, uh, the roof, all of it was like really, really, really nice for yellow. Yellow is like on an Evo, Anybody knows a yellow Evo, they all look like shit. They are just as bad almost as the red Evos in, in your original paint. So took the front bumper off, uh, changed the lip, uh, inner fender liners, uh, all the grills were painted in the front, all new hardware in the front. So now we have this whole new, brand new front bumper assembly to put back on the car. Now we do the side skirts. So the sky skirts were all trashed. Those are all refurbished now. Completely all the paint matches. We use PPG here. So like the paint color, like can literally almost paint, panel paint anything right on the car, can't even tell it was ever done. Uh, the back of the car did not come with a JDM rear bumper when he got it. Luckily, I have them in stock all the time, so that was the only next logical choice to do on this car was a JDM rear bumper, because the front looks so good. Put that on the car with all the proper things, made him his license plate bracket and the whole, the whole business in the back of the car. So now, the only thing left on the car that needed to be redone was the wing. The wing was smoked. So we ended up finding a nicer wing. We took it apart, we do the wing restorations here in house, cleaned up all the carbon, got like three, four coats of clear on it, painted the end caps, reassembled the whole thing with new hardware, put it on the car. Now it's a car. Now it's like, holy crap, and when you look at it. So the restoration's like pretty much done at this point. I haven't even paint corrected the car yet. Barely even washed the thing, pull it outside. I'm like, wow, that is a far cry from where it, kept where it was when it came in because all the grills were smoked, all the things were falling off the car. And again, this was a clean car when we got it, but now it looks like 20 times better than it did before. So originally the car was set up more of a race spec car. It was forward facing turbo, hood exit, real aggressive, extremely noisy, ran like shit. Uh, the tune was garbage. Uh, you could barely see anything with the exhaust coming up over the hood. It was, it was really hard to drive, but I wanted something that would retain AC and be able to run a full size radiator because it was on a half rad before. So he couldn't run AC. Uh, there was no way in hell he was gonna run AC even with a mini kit on this car in South Florida on a half rad, There's just, it's just not happening. The car would overheat like crazy. So we wanted to make sure we put a full size rad in this car. So the R-Tech kit, I have to change the orientation of the turbo because it used a reverse rotation to kind of get everything snugged up underneath there properly. So once that's in there, we have a Garrett reverse rotation on the R-Tech V-Pan manifold. I can put the AC compressor back in there. I can put the condenser back in there and a full size rad. And now it's a street car. Now it is ready to rock on the street. Um, we had our first temperatures on the street. We were running around at like 180, 182, just like just cruising with the car and on a 90 degree day, 95 degree day. So I was totally happy with that, completely happy with that. The catch can on this car was one of my favorites. It's a fat house fab catch can for the Evo 8s. So we were like, all right, well, what do we do with this? Because I needed to actually have a, a nice intake coming from the, the new Garrett Turbo on the Artec uh, with the Artec manifold. It needed some room for a nice big filter. We were actually able to relocate the entire catch can underneath the driver's side fender area. Now I have to make a new lower intercooler pipe. Fine, no big deal. Make the cold side now. That goes up to the throttle body. Made that, no problem. That's all three inch aluminum. Didn't really want to do tie on this car. I just wanted to do something nice, quick and easy. We polished, it looks really, really good. Uh, so once that was done, now the engine bay is like coming together. It looks like something um, from when it, what it was before. It was just like a mishmash of things in the engine bay. Now it's like coming together, looking like something. The intercooler pipes lined up. Everything's kind of hidden. Everything has its place. Mini battery is in its place. All the unnecessary things are, are removed. Um, we actually re-loomed the entire engine harness, took it out, cut anything out that was unnecessary, changed all of that, 
reinstalled everything and now it's like tucked properly and protected properly so you don't get anything uh, caught in anything, any moving parts, anything like that. So that's all up in there now. Now we're like on the right path to uh, get into the next step of firing this car up. Um, I didn't love the oil pressure in it from the beginning. Uh, once we actually got a sensor in it because it came to us with a hall tech in it but homeboy never put a sensor in it so we had no clue what was happening um took the pan off i figured there was um, a pickup tube issue fixed that had good oil pressure i was happy again uh, reinstalled completely the hall tech system front to back all the wiring in the fuel system was redone originally it was on a hob system where it would just put the fuel pumps on sequentially with vacuum we wanted to make sure the hall tech controlled that so we had to go in and actually unwire internally in the sending unit because they were wired in a weird way where it used the factory uh, turn on for the one pump and a hob switch for the second one. So we wanted the Haltech con to control all of that. So we took that out, rewired that, cleaned the filters while we were in there, really serviced anything that was inside the tank itself, new wiring to the pumps, made sure those had a really nice connection all the way to the pumps. And then we were satisfied at least in the meantime for how the fuel system would be used. Um, it's not PTFE lines on the car, but again, we didn't make it. We, if we made it, we would be aluminum lines under the car. And it wasn't so bad that I, I felt that we had to change it or something. Yeah, ideally that would be cool, but wasn't necessary. So when we went to fire the car up after it sat for a little bit during build, I got nothing. In this car in particular, these were older injectors, no movement, like they were dead. I've seen this a million times. So got some new ID injectors in the car. Now it actually has fuel. Now we have proper resolution all the way through uh, any kind of rev range that you want it to be in with new injectors. The brake system was a standard Evo brake system, nothing fancy. Um, just standard Brembo's, but they were just old and dilapidated. Um, there was, they were just the original red against yellow. I'm not a big fan of ketchup and mustard. So got the calipers off, refinished them in a really, really nice gloss black, did DBA rotors with gold hats. It matched everything, kind of went with the car. Um, luckily for Jared, I had a set of wed sports here that I really wasn't doing anything with. And they were my, one of my personal sets of wheels. And I was like, ah, these look so good on this car. I just have to put them on the car. Uh, they were my favorite wheel on the planet and they just, they make the whole build of the car, uh, just having them on the car. So those went on, brakes went on. Uh, it now looks complete. There's no area that you look at and you're like, oh, they should have done that. No, we've done it all. We've touched everything. It's all finished. I can promise you from the top to the bottom, underside, all the undercoatings off of the car, it's all ice blasted. It looks like brand new, absolutely. The exhaust had to be done either way because there was nothing because we had a hood exit before and nothing else. So we needed to make a full exhaust. So made of a nice stainless downpipe. Um, I always like to go stainless at least in the front couple feet of the exhaust because of the heat stuff. Uh, we don't want any kind of warpage or breaking. Uh, so I want something robust up there. But after that, I usually go from stainless V-band to titanium V-band and then back from there is whatever's on the menu for today. Most of the time I like to do slip fit. Um, it never leaks, there's no gaskets, it doesn't make any noise, it's, it's adjustable. Um, and when you do it right, it never moves and it's very lightweight. So all slip fit with springs and clamps and really custom uh, mounts for everything. I made them like a, a four inch uh, exit out the back. We used a Tycon titanium muffler for it. A lot of really, really cool parts. The thing, the, the titanium portion anyway, probably weighs, I don't know, seven pounds, eight pounds, maybe 10, something like that. You can pick it up like that. Um, I really can't stand the, the how heavy some exhausts are. So if, you ever, if you've ever picked up a three and a half inch stainless exhaust that somebody's made, it's like, it's probably almost a hundred pounds. It's really, really heavy. That's a lot of weight on a car. So 
we want to make sure, and that's hanging on the bottom on, on some rubber hangers. So this doesn't weigh anything. So it's never going to like come off the car. So, and they look good too. So we always polish them. They always look neat and they sound good too. They have that, that titanium tone to them. And I, I love it on almost any car and they're fun to make. For me, they're fun to make. They take forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. But the result is cool though, for sure. That's why we do it. Before we took it to the dyno, all the halt tech had to be configured. Uh, after re rewiring, we added a keypad. We added uh, a four EGT package uh, to the exhaust manifold. Got all the sensors added in, got the oil pressure, oil temperature in, fuel pressure, uh, content, all of the extra things that I like to add in the, in the system there. We took it out in the street for a little rip, checked it out, made all the turbo noises, did the anti-lag, did the rolling stuff. It was very cool. We got some good smiles out of that one. more things after the car was done. So we got the car all buttoned up, everything was finished with the car, we got it outside, we appreciated it, we were like, holy shit, this looks great. There's a handful of things I wanted to do before it left though. We knew we were going to the dyno, I wanted to change the throttle body, I wanted to change the intake manifold, and I wanted to change the crusty valve cover that was on the car. So PRP, we got together, they make a really, really nice rocker cover now uh, that we've been working together to help them design. We have some other products that we're helping them design in the Evo world, but this one in particular, um, we love it. It looks, it is the crown jewel now of the engine bay in Jared's car. If you're interested in it, there's a link below. You can take a look there and we have a discount code as well. So you can shop and save some money on the site. Got that on the car. We had to redo some of the wiring for the coil packs because they're just oriented in a little bit different way. Got that on the car. Got the intake manifold from Skunk 2 on the car. I like it. And we use one of their black throttle bodies on the car as well. Uh, so now the engine bay is looking like on point. And we had to wait a little bit in between when we initially finished the car and when I had all these parts in stock to get it all together. But it was definitely worth the wait. And now we're ready to hit the dyno with all these new prep parts. Hey, I'm Chris. I'm from Slowpoke Tuning and just came down from Jacksonville to tune this beautiful Evo 8 for uh, HD Works that they just put back together and did their usual touch up on it. It's running a Haltech Elite 2500 with full sensor package on it and all kinds of cool stuff. This car is set up just the way that I would do it. You know, it's got a two liter engine in it with a Haltech ECU. It's a very stout platform. It, they can handle a lot of power for being just a, a small displacement four cylinder. I'd like to see something starting with an eight maybe. Everything has to work for it to happen. So we'll see what happens. Chris and I have worked together over the years on a lot of different projects. Uh, he's really good with the Evo stuff. Uh, he holds a ton of records in not only the R35 GT R R world, but the Evo world as well. Long story short with this is that we ended up having to wipe the whole thing out, starting a base map over on the dyno. Chris was a saint that day and just kind of helped me get through that portion of it because I wanted him to get in involved with the car and, and be able to tune it, but I didn't really want to start from scratch, but we really had no choice. I had no choice but to just press the ejecto cedo button and just start from scratch. It wasn't the end of the world because we knew all the parameters, we knew what was going on. Got that rolling, now we're off to the races. Now we're tuning, now we're doing drivability, and now we're doing first, second, third, we're doing uh, all the little things to make the car drive properly, idle control, get the timing set, get all the things set properly, and now we're off to the races. Now we're gonna start doing power pulls.
probably did 15 pulls. So we're like happy with that. We knew where the restrictions were, the bottlenecks. We were going to take it off the dyno and uh, revisit that, put cams in it, put an intercooler in it a little bit better so it would actually flow a little bit better because this car originally was built probably 10 years ago. Uh, it had an original Busher motor in it. It was always in the back of my head that something was going on with the oil pressure, even from the beginning. So take it off the dyno. I'm like, all right, Jared, please take the first execution around the block with this thing and, and rip its head off. So gets in the car uh, and I hear him down the street. They're doing like, doing a couple rips, like one, two, three, did another rip. And then I hear him like come around the block. And I hear him again, do one more rip and then I don't hear a whole lot. Okay, whatever. It's probably traffic. And I, and I, I hear, I see him poke their head out the corner of the street, a couple blocks away. And I'm like, what's that? And I heard it. And it's getting louder. It's getting closer and closer. I'm like, fuck me, man. It's getting closer, getting closer. I'm like, oh my god. I'm like, just shut it off, just kill it. Cause he's like getting closer. I'm just like, just kill it. <laughs> Cause I already know, I know what it is. I personally get in, I start the car up for three seconds. I'm like, yep, motor's done, that's it. That's game over. And this is four o'clock, maybe four o'clock in the afternoon. For whatever reason, the number two rod bearing just decided to eject itself from the crank. Once we got it back to the shop uh, about uh, 10 hours later, I took the pan off and figured out what was going on. It was number two. And uh, so now we're just in the process of building another motor. So Evos or any of these builds can go from really exciting to like super depressing like that. Uh, well, that's all part of it, though, because a lot of people don't necessarily talk about this end of it. They don't talk about uh, the shit part of this. Like, everybody, you know, it's part of it. Everybody understands it, but nobody, like, nobody wants to do a video about it. Nobody wants to talk about this stuff. But this is half of probably what car building is, or more. The, uh, the glorified section is at the end where you're driving it around and taking pictures of it. Yeah, that's the fun shit. That's the cool stuff, but a lot of it isn't this. It's it's the it's the frustration and and the money and the time and the and this and that getting to the end portion, um, and this is the when you blow a motor it's even more of a setback because you did all the fab work and you spent all those hours and you were so pumped, and now you can't drive it again. So in the next episode we're going to dive in a little bit more to the next steps of what we're going to end up doing to rectify this. And we'll go through what we're going to use for the motor, uh, what components, how we did it, how it goes together. Uh, we're going to change the head configuration a little bit, just a couple little minor things, and we're going to see what it does on the next round. Thankfully, though, uh, when we did have it at the dyno, nothing catastrophic happened. Um, nobody was waving through the side of the block uh, with the rod or anything. Nothing happened on the dyno itself, so we're very th thankful of that. Uh, again, and that's part of it too, that can happen where you window mod something and God forbid something you know may catch on fire, there's oil everywhere. That's, that's like the worst scenario, uh, especially in standing on a dyno in somebody else's shop too, it's very embarrassing. So we're just trying to feel none of that happened. It was a controlled situation and now we're just gonna move on to the next step. So really appreciate you watching the video. Uh, hit the subscribe button below. Check us out on Instagram. Hit me up in an email. Shoot me a text. I don't care. Thanks for watching.